All right, so let's go through and talk about what these mutations are so you can answer these questions and do it properly. All right, so the mutations lecture slides, you can follow along with them. All right, so what are mutations? All right, so is there any change in the nucleotide sequence? They can occur in either somatic or gametic cells. And you need to understand for the EOC that different effects happen from different um, types of cells being affected. If it happens in your somatic cell, that's your body cells. Would I pass that on to my children? If Would I pass on some of my genetic information that occurred in the beginning in, like, my elbow? Would it? Would my elbow get uh, any genes passed on from it specifically? No. The only thing that gets passed on to my children would be from my gametic cells, right? My eggs, in my case. It would be sperm if it was a dude, right? So if a deletion or a substitution or a frame shift or any of those mutations happen in the egg, then we have a huge problem, right, for the children. Would it really affect me? No. So think about it. Where it occurs matters. Because if I get the mutation in any cell other than my eggs, it will affect me in some way, right, but not my kids. If the mutation happens in my eggs, it will affect my children, but not me. See the difference? It's important that you understand that, okay? So somatic cells are literally any cell in your body that's not an egg or a sperm. Gametic cells are just egg and sperm cells. That's it. That's why women have so much trouble as they age having children. Because your eggs, you only make eggs one time, right? Remember, males make eggs, uh, make sperm every three days without stop till the day they die, right? Unless there's something wrong. Females don't. You only have the eggs that you were born with. That's it. Old eggs have more mutations. They're old. Think about it. If a 40-year-old woman is having babies, her eggs are older than she is, right? Because your eggs were produced in the womb of the mother. That's why one in four children born to a mother over 40, one in four will have Down syndrome. That's a massive amount, right? That means like four times that I roll the dice, one time is going to be the, you know, sadly for that poor child, the wrong time, right? That's why we call them very, very high risk pregnancies. We don't want women over 40 having babies because the amounts of mutations that occur in their eggs are huge. Which can, I mean, it doesn't mean that they can't have babies, right? It just means that there's a greater chance that they will have some massive issues. And we're going to talk about what those could be, all right? All right, so are mutations helpful or harmful? We do know one thing. We know that there is a constant mutation rate. And it doesn't matter if you're a human being or a frog or a snake or even a you know, a bacteria, you're going to have mutations and they're going to happen at a constant rate depending on the species. Bacteria have a very high mutation rate, but that's why they're so good at surviving. Think about it. If you have a mutation that causes you to be altered in some way, what if that alteration, I mean, you've all watched X-Men, right? What if that alteration was helpful in a way, right? Well, if it was helpful, then that mutation is a good thing, right, over time. Or it could be the opposite, right? It could be a delir um, deleterious, which means really, really bad, sometimes fatal. But a deleterious mutation, would it get passed on to the children? If it was fatal right away, would you have time to grow up and have kids? It depends, doesn't it? Is it a deleterious mutation that causes you to have like a buildup over time? If you reach the age of having children, then it can be passed on, right? But if you never make it to that age, then that mutation doesn't proliferate. Because you're passing your genetic information on to your children, right? If you never have any kids, does that mutation go anywhere? No. So we have thousands and thousands of mutations that just don't go anywhere because one, they're either in a somatic cell, which is somewhere that's not passed on, right? 
or they're in a gametic cell, but you never reach maturity. So I hate to say that those are better than the ones that you can make it to maturity with, but it's kind of better for you know society as a whole. I know it's not all great that you die, but all right, so almost all mutations that occur are neutral. They really don't have a lot of effect. And then sometimes uh, we can induce mutations. You've all talked about, like you've all seen it on packages where it says this causes cancer, right? Or is known in the state of California. Most of the time it has that stupid California thing where it says this has been known in the state of California to cause cancer, blah, 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 right? Because California is the ones that um, are doing those testings and they require those labels. So that state requires the label on almost everything, which is ridiculous because they have it on water. <laughs> yeah. All right, but chemicals can induce mutations depending on the chemical, what it is. Um, we have mutagens that we learned about in safety back in the day. If you learned what you were supposed to at the beginning of the year, you learned about a strong mutagen. Um, and it looks, uh, the safety symbol looks like a guy with his, like a star ripping out of his chest kind of thing. Those are mutations causing chemicals. And some of them can, like formalin or formaldehyde. Um, can cause mutations, but you're going to have to like swim in it constantly. And you're not going to be doing that. Um, but there are some that do UV rays. You heard the sunlight causes cancer, right? Right? Skin cancer. I got a little piece that I had to take off my nose. Skin cancer happens because of UV rays. And yes, African Americans, better watch out. If you don't wear sunscreen, you still get the same amount of UV rays that I am. So that doesn't mean that just because you don't burn that you're not going to get skin cancer. You totally can. I just get it worse because I'm like completely pale and secret. I'm ridiculous. Like, it's awful. But you really can. So sunscreen is important. No matter what you, you know, no matter what your skin color is, it doesn't matter. You need it. All right, but many mutations are repaired. We can have, we do have a repair mechanism in our, in our DNA, in our cells, which is awesome. Um, and that repair mechanism can fix some mutations. It doesn't fix all, but it can fix some, depending on what they are. And those are enzymes that work naturally in your body, which are pretty awesome. Because if you didn't have this, then these mutations would never be able to be fixed. And over time, as a population, you can imagine like generation after generation after generation, all the mutations would kind of build up and then we would just all have big problems and die off. So good thing we have these enzymes that do fix most of these mutations. So again, are they helpful or harmful? Well, some types of skin cancers, leukemia, do you know what leukemia is? That's cancer in your blood. So leukemia is a blood cancer which can be a huge problem because think about every cell needs blood, right? So every cell in your body would be affected, which is really bad. Um, but those result from somatic mutations. You can't pass on leukemia. And that's because it's not in a comedic cell. But you can pass on. Um, some mutations can actually improve our survival, like we were talking about with the bacteria. This is where the bacterial resistance comes in. You ever heard about bacteria being resistant to antibiotics and things like that? Well, this is how they get it. They get it from mutations. So if we kill off almost all of the bacteria, if you've ever seen those stupid commercials, they say like 99 point whatever. I think this one says, no, this one's crappy, cheapo. But some of them, they say like 99.9% .9 effective, right? That 0.1% though is still living, isn't it? That 0.1% is going to reproduce. Are any of the 99% that died off going to reproduce? So that 0.1% has that mutation that it's allowed to survive, isn't it? So what's going to happen with the next generation? Very next generation, bacteria reproduce. E. coli reproduces every 20 minutes. They have a new generation. So one makes two, two make four, four make eight. It's going to keep going, right, exponentially every 20 minutes. Every generation past that point that originated at the point one, they're all now immune to it. So is this really going to help? No. Not after a few generations, is it? Because of the mutation rate in bacteria is so high, we have a massive antibiotic resistance problem in the especially developed countries because every time you guys get sick or a cough, what do you do? Run to the doctor and get an antibiotic, right? They're not 100% effective. 
And if you don't take your medicine every day on the day, exactly with the same time, you're gonna really lead to a lot more bacteria resistance. And where is it gonna be resistant inside your body? So the next time you get sick, we're not gonna be able to treat it. That's even worse, isn't it? And it's because of mutations have allowed them to survive. That's what has allowed them to survive for millennia, right? It's good for the bacteria, just bad for us, yeah. Not necessarily. If it's a bacterial infection, it's different. Bacterial infection, your immune system isn't going to fight off as much as uh, like a virus and things like that. It doesn't produce uh, secondary immunity. All right, so you need to understand what a chromosome is. Remember, chromosome is just the wrapped up, curled up DNA, right? It is the condensed form of DNA. It only occurs during meiosis, right? When you are prom promoting um, cellular division, right? When you are dividing your cells, this is where this happens, mitosis and meiosis, when you're separating. All right, so you have a couple of types of mutations. I'm gonna go over some that we've already talked about. We just didn't call them mutations. We've talked about whenever a chromosome um, happens, we can change the structure of the chromosome. So if you lose pieces, we talked about this when we were doing sex-linked genetics, when we lost pieces. Remember Kleinfelters? whether XXY, Turner, where you're XXX or just an X, and then you have, um, or trisomy X, and then Turner's would be just an X. Those are deletions of an entire sex chromosome or additions of an entire sex chromosome. Those are mutations of entire chromosomes, which can be a big deal. All right, so there's five major types of um, mutations. You have deletion, inversion, translocation, non-disjunction, and duplication. They sound really fancy, but they're not that bad, okay? All right, so a deletion, what do you think happens there? Come on. Something's deleted. Something's deleted. And if we're talking about a whole chromosome, that'd be a big deal, can't it? Because a chromosome contains almost half of your genes because you only have two sex chromosomes. How many chromosomes in total do we have? 46, right? So if you lose one, you're losing a major chunk of your DNA, which can be a huge problem. So most of these are due to breakage. When they're separating during meiosis, remember when those spindles attach, right? And they rip the X's apart. Sometimes what happens is they don't break at the centromere. If they break somewhere else, this is what happens. It doesn't come across right or it doesn't get copied. Remember when it was copied? Something happens with the DNA and it doesn't copy a section. So all the babies off of that one particular um, section or all the resulting child, not babies hopefully, but that resulting child will have a missing section of DNA, which is a huge problem. All right, so a piece of a chromosome is lost in deletion. So you wind up with, here's the sister chromatid. You have a segment that for whatever reason doesn't copy or is deleted out. You wind up with a very short chromosome. So they're literally shorter because it's missing a hunk of it. All right, so inversion, that's when it breaks off funny. And then it reattaches it upside down. Can it read it? Five prime to three prime is how it reads. What if it hits from five prime to three prime and then all of a sudden it flips back to three again? Can the um, DNA be duplicated? It can't. So the segment is there, but it's upside down. And so you wind up with an inversion, means it's flipped. And again, it leads to major issues. Even though the genes are there, they're unusable. Duplication, take a while, guess what that happens. It accidentally copies it twice. If it copies it twice, you have two times the genes and your body doesn't know what to do with it. All right, translocation. 
This happens when two chromosomes that are not homologous do crossover. Remember, crossover happens during meiosis, right? And it's usually a good thing because it increases genetic diversity. But remember we said that the DNA is just like a bunch of magnets, right? You get it next to something that's another magnet, and it's going to start attaching. And that's what happens here is two chromosomes that are not the same get near each other enough that they start interacting. And when they do that, they exchange bases, and that can be a huge problem. And that's called translocation. You have the gene for it, but it is not where it's supposed to be, and so it's unusable. All right, so they're transferred somewhere else, which can be a big problem. All right, so before, it's like this, and then after, you flip it, but these are not homologous chromosomes. They are not supposed to interact like that. Non-disjunction. Non-disjunction can be an issue because during meiosis, remember, we've copied the genes, right? We copy the DNA, and then we take half to one side, half to the other, right? And then half of those goes in each daughter cell. What happens with non-disjunction is they don't separate. So you wind up with issues like Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Klinefelter's, trisomy X, that's because meiosis didn't occur correctly. That's why we get babies with Down syndrome. You all know what a Down syndrome person looks like. They almost all have the same facial features, don't they? Almost all of them. And that's because of the way that the uh, trisomy 21, tri means three, right? They have a third 21 chromosome. On that 21st pair, it's not a pair, it's a triplet. Every one of those kids with Down syndrome has that. And it's, what type would it be? It's a non-disjunction. It did not separate. So remember when you separate and you have the four daughter cells, one of those cells had three one of those cells that died or didn't get reproduced had none. And that's what happened, is you happened to roll the dice. That's why one in four, get it? Why we said one in four chances, because one in four is the one that has three. That is trisomy 21. That's Down syndrome. Or you have Turner's. So Turner syndrome, they're a lot shorter. Their neck is really thick. Their own only happens to females. That's when they only have one X. They don't develop at puberty. They wind up being sterile. Uh, they can't have babies is what that means. Uh, their ovaries don't really develop well. Um, and then they have a lot of heart defects, a lot of heart defects. Um, and it's because all of those things are uh, all those genes for those items are on that X chromosome that they're missing. Klinefelters happens to males. And Klinefelters is when they have one more X than they should have. They are XXY. Usually with Klinefelters, it can be from mild to severely affected. And some of the, them will never know that they're an XXY. Because do they have an X? Yes. Do they have a Y? Yes. So will they develop relatively normally? Yeah, but they won't be able to have children. They will be sterile. Um, and they have a lot of weaker muscle structures. They tend to be um, thinner with like fat deposits in weird places. Most men that have Kleinfelters um, don't realize it until they go to have children and they can't have children. It's going to be really tall. All right, so what happens in non disjunction? What happens is this. Come on. Click. You don't want to click. There it is. All right, so what happens in non disjunction? This is the issue. Remember meiosis? You double everything and you rip it apart, and then you wind up ripping that apart, and you wind up with half in each one, right? Non disjunction means somebody doesn't do what they're supposed to, it doesn't separate. It follows the other one. And so you wind up with three where you should have only had one in each one. You have somebody has an extra, and that's a problem. 
And if that happens in these sex cells, what determines the male or female sex, that's when we get Klein filters and Turners and all of that stuff. All right, so in uh, what happens in a chromosome, you have an inversion here where it's upside down, you have a deletion where it separates and it's not from where it's supposed to be, an insertion. So you wind up having all of these major issues are just from reading these um, DNA sequences wrong. So duplication, we accidentally duplicated one. What would that do to the reading? Think about what's going to happen when I'm reading this codon by codon. It's going to change a lot. Deletion, taking one out, you're missing the D altogether. It's going to change every amino acid behind it. Inversion, where they're upside down, you're not going to be able to read it at all. At all. It's just going to be non-usable. And then in, um, what's going to happen is you're going to have some major genetic disorders come up. All right, so a change in the sequence is just mutations. They can involve a single point or multiple points. They're due to copying errors, uh, chemical exposure, UV exposure, uh, viruses. Some viruses can insert their DNA and change your DNA. That's how they work. Uh, there's a lot of issues. All right, so these are the five that we need to know today. Point mutations, substitutions, insertions, deletions, and frame shift. You need to be aware of what they do to the reading codons. So a single more uh, point mutation is a single nucleotide change. One single nucleotide change. And that's what we're talking about on this mutation activity. What does it cause? All right, so this is the most important section. If this is the original DNA codon here, what happens, this actually codes for leucine, right? That's what it should code for. Well, in a frame shift, what if a G got added in there? If I add a G, is this going to code for leucine anymore? What about every single gene past that point? Because if I add this, this is now UUG, which is completely different. This is now A something something that's completely different. The other one's completely different. Everybody is shifted down one, isn't it? So every single amino acid will be wrong from that point forward. A frame shift is the worst single point mutation you can get. Because why? Because every single amino acid past that point is wrong. All of them. Which can be a big deal. All right, so a silent mutation, what if this U, or I'm sorry, uh, one of these is still codes for Lucy. Remember on that codon chart, a lot of you asked me, why is there like four of them that code for the same thing? Because of mutations. We want that to be possible because you have a higher chance that it's not going to be a big deal. If it still codes for leucine, is it going to cause any issues? If it still codes for the correct amino acid, is it going to cause any issues? No. It should still work, right? The protein should still work. Everything should be fine. It should still fold correctly. So the silent mutation is called silent because you're not going to see any effects from it. Yes, it's there, but you really don't notice any effects because it still codes for the same thing. Like if this U was switched um, and you wind up having, it just still codes for leucine, you're fine, or still codes for whatever amino acid it is. A missense is we change that U to a G. It's an insertion. It inserts something, um, but it doesn't cause a frame shift because it's just going to take one out and put one in. It's just the wrong one. And so it codes for something else. So if it has a point mutation, if one single nucleotide changes and it doesn't code for the same amino acid, that's called a missense. And what's going to happen, it depends. If that missense is going to code for something else, you are going to have an effect in the protein. You could possibly make that protein ineffective. You can make it not fold properly. This is where all those genetic diseases come in, all of them. And then finally, a nonsense mutation. That codes for a stop. 
If it accidentally codes for a stop in the middle of making a protein, is it going to make that protein? No. It's going to stop it right in the middle of it. And that can be a big issue, obviously. Are you going to get that protein? No. So that's a nonsense. It accidentally codes for a stop where it shouldn't stop. So these are the four types of, of point mutations that you should know about. So sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a disease that results from a single point mutation. It's a big deal. One in seven African Americans will have this disease and pass it on to their children, which can be a huge deal because it's extremely painful. Uh, but it's not just an African-American disease. There's quite a bit of it happening in the Hispanic community. It can't happen in any other, you know, any other race, but it just happens to be really prevalent in those communities. And it's because of a single point mutation. We can trace it back to a single man in Africa, one guy, um, but he had a massive number of children, massive number of children, and he was really prepotent, which meant that this genetic mutation went to almost all of his children, which is a problem. We can trace it back to one guy. All right, but it occurs in the hemoglobin gene, and you see this one cell here? See it? Is that a fully functioning cell? No. So what happens is they can't carry oxygen. If you can't carry oxygen, then what's going to happen to your cells? They're going to slowly suffocate, aren't they? And that suffocation is excruciating. These cells also are sickle-shaped. They're C-shaped. And so they kind of get stuck together, which means they have blood clots. And you all have heard how blood clots can be such a big deal, right? Think about every single cell in your body has to go through tiny little capillaries. If you have sickle cells, they're going to get stuck in those capillaries, which is why it's so painful. And it can occur at any place in their entire body, which is really awful. All right, so frame shifts are the worst, right? Um, and it changes the reading frame because it shifts those three codons it shifts them down, all of them. So every single one is wrong from that point on. So that's why these proteins don't work. They're wrong. All right. The, um, so we like to give you this example here. Where'd he go? Fat cat ate the wee rat. So if it codes for the fat cat ate the wee rat, if I had a frame shift, that means it would now code, like if I have an A here, well, now it doesn't say the fat cat ate the wee Do you notice how everything doesn't work anymore? It shifted. All it did was add another A here, so it shifted all of these that way, and we're reading them three letters at a time, aren't we? So everything past that point is wrong. Do you see why that would no longer code for the correct thing at all in any of them? It's not just the cat that would be affected, is it? It's everything past that point. All right, so you change the amino acid sequence completely. If that G gets shifted, then what we're winding up having is everything past that point is wrong, all of them. All right, so substitution changes out a single uh, letter. And insertions cause this problem. It can cause a frame shift because it changes, so it depends on which one is inserted. Deletions take sections out. They can also cause a frame shift. So this is what you need to know. Substitutions changes one. Insertion adds something new in. And then deletions takes things out, all of which can be really, really, really bad. So look at this sequence. Look at the normal male. Stop doing that. Why are you doing that? There we go. So look at this normal male. How do I know it's normal? How do I know it's normal? Because this is 23 pairs, right? Nobody has a triplet. Nobody is extra short. And you have one X and you have one Y. Always your sex chromosomes are at the end. So if they give you these on the UC, look at the end. X and a Y, that is going to be a male. And then look at the difference. Look at the female. 
See how she has two X's? See how she has no Y's? That's normal. Tries to be 21, you see it? See the try at 21? That's going to be caused from Down syndrome. And I know this is a male because he has an X and a Y. Female with Down syndrome because she has two X's, but she has trisomy 21. Klein filters because there's two X's and a Y. You see how we're able to, de to decide what these are? You need to be able to read a karyotype. All right, so 